This was not a flight into bad weather, it wasn't caused by a mechanical failure, and it wasn't the result of an unknown or hidden hazard. The aircraft was working normally, the conditions were good, the obstacle was charted and well known, and yet this flight ended in a fatal accident. What makes this case worth examining is not what went wrong technically, but what went wrong cognitively. Because this accident began with a small, avoidable pilot mistake, made at low altitude, in an environment where there was no margin for recovery. And as we'll see, it's the kind of mistake that doesn't look dramatic at the time. It doesn't feel dangerous, but once the margin is gone, there's very little a pilot can do to get it back. The flight was a pipeline patrol conducted under Part 91. These missions are common across the United States and are often seen as routine work for general aviation aircraft. The goal is straightforward. Visually inspect pipelines for leaks, damage, or unauthorized activity, flying low enough to clearly see the infrastructure on the ground. But while the task itself is simple, the environment it requires is anything but forgiving. Pipeline patrol flights are typically flown at very low altitudes, often well below 1,000 feet above ground level. At those heights, pilots are operating in a world filled with obstacles. Towers, power lines, wind turbines, antennas, and their associated guy wires are everywhere. Many of them are thin, difficult to see, and offer no warning before impact. This means the pilot's primary safety tool is not automation or redundancy or time. It's attention. Continuous, disciplined visual scanning is essential because there's very little room for delay. At low altitude, a few seconds of late recognition can be the difference between avoidance and impact. The aircraft used for this flight was a Cessna 182H Skylane. It's a well-known, stable, and capable airplane widely used for observation and patrol work, with good visibility, predictable handling, and solid climb performance. It's well suited for this kind of mission. But even a reliable aircraft cannot compensate for physics. At low altitude, performance matters less than geometry. If the airplane is pointed toward an obstacle and the pilot sees it too late, there may simply not be enough space left to maneuver, no matter how capable the aircraft is. To manage this risk, the operator had established a specific procedure. During patrol flights, the airplane was to be flown to the right side of the pipeline. The reason for this is simple and practical. With the pilot seated on the left side of the cockpit, flying slightly to the right provides a clear, unobstructed view of the pipeline below. This positioning helps reduce workload. It keeps the primary task, visually tracking the pipeline, aligned with the pilot's natural field of view. And in an environment where attention is constantly being taxed, small procedural details like this matter. The task itself wasn't unusual, but the environment demanded discipline every second. The pilot flying this mission was 23 years old. He held a commercial pilot certificate and was also a certified flight instructor. His total flight time was just over 600 hours, with the majority of that time logged as pilot in command. From a regulatory and qualification standpoint, there were no red flags. He was properly certificated, medically cleared, and current. Toxicology later showed no evidence of impairment. There was nothing in his background that would suggest he was unfit to conduct this flight. This is an important point because it helps frame what happened next. Accidents like this are sometimes assumed to involve inexperience or lack of training. In this case, that assumption doesn't hold. The pilot had enough experience to understand the risks of low-altitude flight and the importance of maintaining a constant lookout. However, experience alone doesn't eliminate workload. And this flight was conducted single pilot, without any additional crew to share tasks or cross-check decisions. Everything, aircraft control, navigation, obstacle avoidance, visual inspection, and situational awareness rested on one person. Single pilot operations are common in general aviation, but they require careful management of attention. When the workload increases, something has to give. And often, what degrades first isn't flying skill, 
but awareness of the bigger picture. Earlier that day, the pilot had already completed other legs of pipeline patrol. He had departed, flown multiple segments, landed to refuel, and then departed again. By the time of the accident, this was not the first task of the day. While there's no indication of fatigue in the traditional sense, repetition can create a subtle sense of familiarity. And familiarity can be dangerous in its own way. When a task feels routine, it becomes easier to accept small deviations, to relax discipline slightly, to believe that nothing has changed and that nothing unexpected is likely to happen. But at low altitude, routine does not mean safe. It only means familiar. Nothing about the pilot's background suggested that an accident was inevitable. But as we'll see next, the margin of safety doesn't disappear all at once. It erodes quietly, one small step at a time. Radar data allows investigators to reconstruct the final minutes of the flight with reasonable precision, and what it shows is not a sudden error, but a gradual shift away from a stable situation. For most of the patrol, the aircraft followed the pipeline as intended. However, in the final portion of the flight, the ground track began to diverge. Instead of remaining to the right of the pipeline, the position that best supported forward visibility from the left seat, the airplane crossed over and continued on the left side. This shift is important, not because it violated a rule, but because it changed how the pilot interacted with the environment. Flying on the left side subtly encourages attention downward toward the pipeline itself. Forward scanning, which is critical at low altitude, becomes less intuitive and more easily interrupted. At the same time, the airplane remained consistently low, well below 1,000 feet above ground level. At these altitudes, distance disappears quickly. An aircraft traveling at just over 100 knots covers roughly 170 feet every second. That means a 10-second delay in recognition can translate into more than a quarter mile traveled. Ahead of the aircraft's path stood a tall radio tower, clearly charted and well-known in the area. But the true hazard was not the tower's main structure. It was the guy wires extending outward from its base, anchored hundreds of feet away, and angled upward into airspace that otherwise looks unobstructed. Guy wires are particularly dangerous because they rarely look like obstacles until the aircraft is already too close. They don't provide the same visual cues as solid structures. There is no broad surface, no clear vertical line, and often no contrast against the background. By the time they are detected, avoidance options are already limited. At this stage of the flight, nothing catastrophic had happened. But the safety margin, the combination of altitude, awareness, and positioning, was steadily shrinking. And critically, the pilot may not have perceived that change in real time. This is how many accidents develop, not with a single wrong turn, but with a series of small changes that quietly align in the worst possible way. The final and decisive factor in this accident was a loss of attention at a moment when attention was the primary defense. Evidence gathered during the investigation showed that the pilot used his phone to post a short video on social media shortly before the accident, while the content of the video itself did not capture the final moments. Location data placed the posting within seconds of the aircraft reaching the radio tower's vicinity. The significance here is not the platform or the intention. It's the timing. Low-level flight leaves no room for pauses in situational awareness. When attention shifts away from the external environment, even briefly, the pilot's mental picture stops updating. The airplane continues moving through space, but awareness does not move with it. It's worth asking a quiet but important question. Why does this matter so much at low altitude compared to higher flight levels? At altitude, a pilot who looks away momentarily usually still has time. Time to reorient, to cross-check, to correct. At 500 feet above the ground, time is measured in seconds, not minutes. There is no buffer to absorb inattention. The NTSB concluded that the pilot's visual lookout was degraded and that situational awareness was diminished. In practical terms, this means the pilot likely did not notice how close the aircraft had come to a known obstacle until avoidance options were already limited. This kind of distraction doesn't feel dangerous in the moment. The aircraft is stable, the weather is good, nothing appears urgent. 
That false sense of stability can make it easy to believe that attention can be spared for a moment. But aviation doesn't punish intentions. It responds only to geometry and timing. By the time the pilot's full attention returned outside, the aircraft was already committed to a flight path that left little room to maneuver safely. Radar data from the final seconds shows a sudden and aggressive climb. The airplane's vertical speed increased sharply, indicating a late attempt to clear an obstacle that had appeared too close for comfort. This reaction tells us something important. The pilot did recognize the danger, just not early enough. At low altitude, climbing is often the instinctive response to an obstacle ahead, but climb performance is finite and it takes time and distance to convert airspeed into altitude. When recognition happens too late, even a capable aircraft cannot outclimb the geometry of the situation. The airplane did not strike the radio tower itself. Instead, the left wing impacted one of the supporting guy wires. This detail underscores a critical hazard of low-level flying. The most dangerous obstacles are often the least visible ones. Once the wing was severed, the outcome was immediate and unavoidable. Structural integrity was lost, and the aircraft descended into a field where a post-impact fire consumed much of the wreckage. At that point, there was nothing more the pilot could do. The decisive errors had already occurred earlier, when the margin still existed. The broader lesson from this accident is not about technology or training requirements. It's about attention management. Distraction does not need to be prolonged to be deadly. It does not require complex tasks or long periods of inattention. At low altitude, even a brief diversion can erase the last remaining margin. General aviation pilots are not bound by formal sterile cockpit rules in the same way airline crews are. But this accident is a powerful reminder of why self-imposed discipline matters, especially during high-risk phases of flight. In aviation, the most dangerous mistakes are often the quiet ones the ones that feel harmless at the time, and by the time their consequences become obvious, the opportunity to correct them has already passed.